Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The children ages three and up are invited to meet in the back of the church to go to the children's chapel. They will return at the peace. A reading from the book of Proverbs. A capable wife, who can find? She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the ships of the merchant. She brings her food from far away. She rises while it is still night and provides food for her household and tasks for her servant girls. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hands into the distaff, and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid for her household when it snows, for all her household are clothed in crimson. She makes herself coverings. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the city gates taking his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them. She supplies the merchant with sashes. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. 
She looks well to the ways of her household. She does not eat the bread of the idleness. Her children rise up and call her happy. Her husband too, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm, and, charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a share of the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the city gates. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of James. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him, and three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, what were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. The disciples have knowledge, but they have not received wisdom. Knowledge is a warehouse of information we have learned, while wisdom is profoundly using that knowledge. Wisdom goes beyond learning facts. It is making sense of facts. Knowledge comes from learning. It helps us make a living. Wisdom enables us to make a life. Wisdom is a way of life, a path, a journey. Knowledge is knowing where babies come from. Wisdom is knowing how to care for them. Knowledge is learning the distance between here and New York City. Wisdom knows what to pack for the trip. When asked about love, a knowledgeable person describes what happens in the mind or body when someone experiences love. A wise person speaks to the indescribable feeling of love. A wise person who has experienced love has lived it, has been touched by it, and learned from it. Today, the quest for knowledge may be pursued at higher speeds and sharper tools, writes Arianna Huffington, but wisdom is found no more readily than it was 3,000 years ago in the court of Solomon. In fact, ours is a generation bloated with information but starved for wisdom. Today's readings talk about the difference between wisdom and information, the wisdom of a capable wife in Proverbs, the wisdom of trees planted by streams of water in Psalm 1, the wisdom from above in James, and Jesus' wisdom of welcoming a child in Mark. One of our favorite television series for seven seasons was Mad Men. It is a fictionalized story of a New York advertising agency on Madison Avenue in the 1960s. My husband and I identify with the series' historical accuracy, remembering what happened to us during that time chronicled. 
We see a worldview of the 1960s culture through the prism of this New York ad agency. But of course, it is a soap opera. A favorite episode is about the checkered, shadowy past life of the lead protagonist in the advertising agency, hard drinking, chain smoking, womenizing Don Draper. In Korea, in the army, when he lights a cigarette everyone constantly smokes, he dramatically causes an explosion, killing his commanding officer. He exchanges dog tags and takes the identity of the dead officer, Don Draper. His former self, Dick Whitman, is now dead. I told you it was a soap opera. Eventually, Anna, a Patricia Marquette look-alike, a polio victim, and the wife of the real Don Draper tracks him down at a dealership selling used cars and accuses him of impersonating her husband. Anna and Don eventually become close friends as Anna becomes Don's surrogate mother. Years later, Anna tenderly tells Draper weeks before she dies, I know everything about you more than anyone else and I still love you. This is wisdom from above. This is the wisdom Jesus is trying to teach his disciples. The journey from wisdom is so often going to unconditional love. I know everything about you more than anyone else and I still love you. Thank you, Anna Draper, for teaching us the journey from knowledge to Jesus' wisdom associated most often with unconditional love and peace. Do you remember times in your life when you were given the wisdom Jesus is talking about? You suddenly know what to do when you have all the knowledge possible and you're still struggling. You receive a tiny glimpse of God's love when you feel unloved. You're given wisdom to do something you know you could not have thought of on your own. This first psalm carries me back to coastal Virginia to a local hospital at my dying grandfather's bedside. The dreaded call comes late at night. Your grandfather is in a coma. We think he had a stroke. I board the first plane back to my hometown in Tidewater, Virginia to visit him in the morning. Thoughts flood my mind on that long plane ride. My grandfather is the most significant person in my growing up years. He's a watchmaker, owns a jewelry store on Main Street in my southern hometown of fewer than 5,000 people. I stop by his store every afternoon after school on my way home. He always gives me a nickel to buy an ice cream cone at Riddle's Drugstore, two stores down from his. I spend every Sunday afternoon and evening with my grandparents. We eat the same Sunday dinner. Fried chicken, green beans, potato salad, and maples. My grandparents cook homemade pound cake for dessert. After dinner, my grandfather reads me the funny papers. Then we go to the country to his farm, walking the length of his property by the Mattapanai River as he teaches me about trees and plants and snakes and occasionally shares stories about his growing up days in the Smoky Mountains. Sometimes we visit nearby relatives and the cemetery where my grandmother's parents are buried. Back home, we walk from his townhouse for Sunday night church, then home for Seven Up Floats and the Ed Sullivan Show. I spend the night in what seems like the most enormous bed in their guest bedroom, and after breakfast, walk the shirt short nine blocks to church, to school, <laughs> the next day. 
My grandfather is my symbol of unconditional love, always there for me, supporting and loving me in good times and bad. Unfortunately, I spend little time with him after leaving my hometown and going to college and medical school. He, however, never forgets me and sends letters every week on his 30-year-old typewriter with intermittent keys that barely print. Every other sentence ends with et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Each letter is filled with stories of his experience away from home in World War I and words of love and encouragement. Always enclosed is a dollar bill. When he suffers this stroke 20 years later, I'm devastated. I cannot bear to lose the love I knew was always there no matter what I had done. I walk into my grandfather's hospital room for the first time. He sits up, gasps, and there's an immediate look of astonishment on his face. I believe he knows me even though he never again shows any sign of recognition. As I sit by his bed and listen to his labored breathing, I feel helpless. All my years of medical practice give no answers. By some miracle, I have my prayer book with me, but of course, no Bible. Suddenly I remember the joy of hearing my grandfather read the paper to me as a child after Sunday lunch. This child within tells me what to do. Read the Psalms. I hope my grandfather can forgive my reading from the Book of Common Prayer rather than the King James Bible. Psalm 1. On his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water which yield their fruit in due season and their leaves do not wither. I'm embarrassed when personnel come into the room, but an inner voice says, this is what my grandfather wants to hear. I know he hears me. We both are totally in the moment as one lies and the other sits reading the Psalms as we both anticipate our last moments together. This is what I want at my deathbed, to hear the Psalms read by someone who loves me once more. The source of wisdom comes from my source of unconditional love who spoke through my inner child within. Then he took a little child and put it among them and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. My career for over 40 years was at Arkansas Children's Hospital where I worked with another physician whom I saw as totally incompetent. I cannot understand her decision-making or methods of handling conflicts and problems. Then, one weekend, I take over her job when she is on vacation. I'm presenting with the issues that she daily encounters. Overnight, I become aware of why she makes the decisions she does. Overnight, I gain respect for her and her job. I walk in her shoes and am given that wisdom that now brings me back into relationship with someone I saw as an enemy as I see the world from her perspective. Overnight, God transforms my knowledge of facts to the understanding wisdom about another person. This is the wisdom of Jesus I learn in the synagogue of a children's hospital. Quaker activist Jean Knudsen Hoffman teaches us an enemy is one whose story we have not heard. 
An enemy is one whose story we have not heard. The wisdom from this story tells me that whenever I'm in conflict with someone, I may not know their story. Before we resolve our difficulties, I must try to hear their story. God constantly sends us messages of wisdom of Jesus from above. Wisdom comes from hearing someone else's story. We may only hear this wisdom when we are desperate, when we are vulnerable and more open. Wisdom often comes from suffering, like the pain of birthing a child or the pain of being with a dying loved one. Jesus' wisdom most often leads to unconditional love and the path to peace. Wisdom, suffering, peace, love, these are words of knowledge that we hear today. How do we put them together? Their wisdom from on high most often is a contradiction, a paradox. The peace that comes with wisdom. The peace that comes with wisdom is never the absence of struggle or suffering. Is never the absence of struggle or suffering. But always comes with the presence of love. believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he has worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. O oh God of all creation, open our eyes to see your artistry as we look around us and see all you have made, which from the beginning you declared was good. All creation sings out with joy. Help us be good stewards and caretakers of all creation, especially the gifts of life on this earth, as we join all of creation's song as we praise, praise your, your holy name. name. Empower the church's mission throughout the world to be wise caretakers of all creation. We pray especially that you 
empower Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Larry, our bishop, Stuart, Patricia, Michael, Susan, Joanna, Billy, the clergy of St. Mark's and our staff and vestry to join all of creation's song. Praise your holy name. Look upon those in positions of power and authority in the world and lead them to be good caretakers of all creation, especially Joe, our president, Asa, our governor, Frank, our mayor, joining all of creation's song. We reach out with your healing and love to those who suffer from poverty, oppression, illness, loneliness, economic insecurity, and violence, known and unknown to us. May they come to know the healing love of God of all creation as we give thanks and pray with them, joining all of creation's song. We rejoice with those who have died, who no longer know pain and sorrow, who now live with the God of creation in the resurrection. Help us to be empowered by the privilege of their presence as we give thanks and pray with them. Especially Murtis Wagoner, Quano Tucker, Lenora Steinkamp. Are there others? We give thanks to you, O oh God, for your goodness as we offer gratitude and praise. We give thanks for the marriage last night of Elizabeth Whitback and Lewis Wood and those who are helping with the Shrimp Boil fundraiser for St. Francis House for the Creation Care Team at St. Mark's. Are there others? We pray on behalf of those in need of our intercession, especially Lucy, Becky, Helen, Betsy, Rusty, Trudy, Nancy, Sanford, for the Afghan families coming to Arkansas and for Camp Mitchell. Are there others? John. Help us to join all of creation's song. Praise your holy name. Holy God, earth and air and water are your creation, and every living thing belongs to you. Hear the prayers of your people and have mercy on us as climate change confronts us. Give us the will and courage to simplify the way we live, reduce the energy we use, share the resources you provide, and bear the cost of change. Forgive our past mistakes and send your Holy Spirit of wisdom in present controversies. Give us your holy vision for the future of your creation. We offer our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors and ourselves. We are truly sorry and we have repented. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
Good morning. Welcome to St. Mark's. We're glad each and every one of you is here this morning, and welcome everyone who's joining us uh, via streaming online. Uh, if you're a visitor, I want to extend you a warm welcome and invite you to fill out a visitor information card. Uh, you, there's two ways to do this. You can either take the card from the pew in front, front of you. There's a visitor card, and you can fill it out and drop it in the offering plate uh, as you exit in the narthex. Uh, or you can go online to lovesaintmarks.org click the visitors tab and you'll see a visitor information card that you can fill on there. There's a lot going on this week uh, at St. Mark's. Uh, the first thing uh, I want to point out is uh, the shrimp boil. So we're taking one step closer to being back to our full shrimp boil. We had virtual last year. Uh, we're doing drive through this year. So make sure you buy your tickets. Uh, volunteer if you haven't. Uh, for there's something you can do, there's some, some way you can help out. Uh, and uh, to find out more information on that, uh, if you look at page 16, you'll see uh, they'll direct you to how to get your tickets on Eventbrite, uh, or you could just call the office and we'll help you out there too. Uh, some other things that are coming up are uh, Father Stewart will be speaking uh, to LifeQuest, but everyone is uh, invited to attend. This is going to be the parish hall on Wednesday, September 22nd at noon in our parish hall. Uh, so it's uh, further reflections on uh, his time at, his experience at Trinity Wall Street and Ground Zero at September 11th. Uh, so that's the 22nd at noon in our parish hall. Uh, for members of the Pride group, there's a Central Arkansas, any Episcopalian in Central Arkansas is invited to the Pride event, which is actually at Trinity. Uh, on the 24th at 7, uh, and also for members of our Pride group, remember that they're make, we're making a video uh, at the altar right after the church service today. And then the last thing I have is Camp Mitchell. Uh, Camp Mitchell is uh, on the road to becoming stronger, and they're having hosting an open house and are need fundraising. So uh, if you'll look at the bottom of page 16 on the 25th, that's the Board of Visitors meeting. They're trying to raise $50,000. I don't know how far they've gotten so far. Do we still have work to do? We're getting close, but we're not there yet. So, so if you want to donate to, to Camp Mitchell, you can do so. Uh, or you can also attend that open house. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries? If so, please come forward for a prayer and a blessing. We're in the middle of page eight. Let us pray. Watch over thy child, O Lord, as his days increase. Bless and guide him wherever he may be. Strengthen him when he stands. Comfort him when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise him up when he falls. And in his hearts may thy peace which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. Let's say the anniversary prayer together. There might be someone celebrating the anniversary online. Let us pray. O gracious and ever-living God, look mercifully on those who come to renew the promises they have made to each other. Grant them your blessing and assist them with your grace that with true fidelity and steadfast love, they may honor and keep their promises and vows through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Uh, we're now installing the Daughters of the King officers. The Daughters of the King is a thriving ministry here at St. Mark, so would y'all please come forward? Uh, for the installation. Everywhere I have served as a priest in the last umpteen years, the Daughters of the King have been of enormous benefit to not only congregations, but to me as priest. So I'm really happy to be the one who happens to install you today. 
In the presence of God and each other, we are gathered here to install the elected officers of St. Mark's Grace Chapter of the Order of the Daughters of the King. Let us here covenant with him and with one another to do the things we believe he would have us do and try to do well whatever we attempt. Let us offer ourselves to him that he may continually work through us. The 32 members of Grace Chapter have placed their faith and trust in the following by electing them as their leaders to serve during the length of their terms. Marty Blizzard, President. Catherine Langley, Vice President. Kim Golden, Secretary. Frida Winkler, Treasurer. Joanna Seibert, Chaplain. You have been chosen by these, your friends, to serve in a position of responsibility to you comes the call of leadership. Upon all rests the obligation of cooperation. Receiving now the responsibility placed upon you, will you agree to devote yourselves to the task that your office demands, continually seeking to be used by your Lord Jesus Christ? Marty. I hereby commission you as president of the Grace Chapter of the Order of the Daughters of the King for your term of office. May you lead the women of the Order with deliberation and service, prayerful faithfulness and love. And may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you evermore. Do you accept this responsibility? I will with God's help. As members of the Order of the Daughters of the King, your duty is to cooperate with the officers you have chosen and to work together to fulfill the rules of prayer and service. We promise to pray for and support and cooperate with our officers, offering our best efforts to fulfill the mission of the order. We declare our loyalty to our King, the Lord Jesus Christ, to his church and its works asking the Holy Spirit for guidance and strength in all that we undertake. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, richly bless you in all your efforts to the glory of his name and for his sake. Amen. And the congregation will clap. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Mark the Evangelist and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever.
And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us be peace. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, bring into our past this week someone who is seeking you, who wants to find you, and yet needs only an invitation. Let us be that invitation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen.